sound to, to capture the, the voice of the actors, you know? Okay, okay. So exactly. maybe this is the problem. Because yes, I, I noticed that you are watching any movie and it's like, I don't know why I, the, the, you, exactly, it's, it's a stretch. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so it's very, what they're saying. Where it, yes. Mm -hmm. Totally true, totally true. There is modern movies with modern, were filmed with modern equipment. And this mm -hmm. modern equipment allows people to speak very, very slowly, very, very, uh, in a very low volume. And when you speak in a very low, low, low volume, you don't, uh, you don't pronounce every phonetic properly. I mean, yes. when people are speaking fast, they don't pronounce the phonetic properly. Well, less if they speak slowly. No, if they, if they, if they speak not slowly, the word is in low volume. In low volume, okay, that's, yes. that's the word I mean. Low volume, yes. You know, so this is what the video is about. Now, before we watch it, because uh, Luis is already here, uh, hello, Luis. Did you watch the video yesterday? Oh, good morning. Hi. Uh, to be honest, I didn't have the opportunity to. Perfect. To watch the so video. let's <laughs> let's watch we it together two. in this moment. <laughs> exactly. Don't worry. Don't worry. Let's watch the the video together. Let's check it out. And you tell me what you think and what you understand, of course. I watch a lot of movies and TV, on the train, at home, the movies, while working, while out, doing dishes, in the bath. But no matter where I'm watching, I find myself constantly doing this one thing. As I do always be What? As I do always be <sighs> As I do always be <sighs> As I do always be <sighs> It turns out this isn't unusual. We polled our YouTube audience and about 57% of people said that they feel like they can't understand the dialogue and the things that they watch unless they're using subtitles. But it feels like this hasn't always been the case. So to figure out what was going on, I made a call. Hi, uh, my name is Austin Olivia Kendrick. I'm a professional dialogue editor for film and TV. I basically perform audio surgery on actors' words. Do you watch it sometimes? I... I do, actually. I do, a lot of the time. So why do you think that we all feel like we need subtitles now? I get asked this question all the time. All the time. It's something that is, it doesn't have a simple, straightforward answer. It, it, it's very layered and very complex. And after talking to Austin for almost two hours, it's true. It's a very layered and complex topic. But everything kept pointing back to one main thing. Technology that got us from this. I don't get you. You should be kissed and all. No, Richard, no, what has happened to your life? To this. Well, I just woke up. I'll slim waist it. Well, we better put a head down. Let's start with microphones. I'm going to use this clip from Singing in the Rain to show how mics used to work. Here's the mic. You talk towards it. The sound goes through the cable to the box. A man records it on a big record in wax. <laughs> This scene illustrates some of the difficulties and intricacies of early sound recording. Mics were big, bulky, temperamental, and required creative solutions to be hidden. They were wired and recorded onto hard memory, like wax and eventually tape. No matter how many actors were in a scene, all sound got recorded to one track. So performers had to be diligently focused and facing a certain angle so that their words could be picked up. Otherwise, You couldn't hear a thing. But technology's improved to the point where microphones don't impede performance as much anymore. They've become better, smaller, wireless, and we use more of them to ensure that performances get captured. What we typically are working with from production dialogue is two boom microphones, and then every actor has at least one lavalier microphone hidden somewhere on them. These shrinking mics have given actors the flexibility to be more naturalistic in their performances. They no longer need to project so that their words reach the mic. They can speak softly knowing that the tiny mic hidden on their body will pick up what they're saying. 
And my personal favorite example of this performance shift is Alec Baldwin on 30 Rock. In a 2011 speech slash roast, Tina Fey says that he speaks so quietly that she can't hear him when she's standing next to him. And then you play the film back and it's there somehow. Just listen to this whisper off between him and Will Arnett. I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, we well, should be. Let's just see how it all shakes out in the meeting. Naturalism isn't always the best for intelligibility, though. Take Tom Hardy, an actor that I personally love, but who famously is a mumbler. Your ass is still be floating around in Surrey right now if it wasn't for me. I mean, the mic picked that line up fine. Like, we can definitely hear that he's talking. He's saying something. But once that mumble gets recorded, it's onto a dialogue editor's shoulder to make it as intelligible as possible. And that was a lot harder when everything was analog. While you could pick the best takes and physically spice them together, if some piece of dialogue was truly impossible to understand, then actors will come in and re-record those specific lines in a process called ADR, or Automated Dialogue Replacement, which you can see Meryl Streep do in this scene from Postcards from the Edge. There's enough money in the world to further a cause like yours. That still gets done today, but... ADR also costs money because that it, you're not only paying for the actor's time, you're paying for the engineer's time and then the editor's time. So we try to do ADR, frankly, as little as possible. And so a lot of her job is making words sound better. The show I'm currently working on, I remember in the middle of this one word, there was just this loud metal clang that I, I couldn't remove. So I had to go in and I had to find an alternate take of it that fit and then I had to fit it to the movement of her mouth in that moment and then push it in. And once she's done with it, it's sent off to a mixer who works to make sure the frequencies of the sound effects and music don't overlap with the frequencies of the human voice. Something that's only possible now that the world has moved away from tape and into digital recordings. That is a big challenge, carving out those frequencies, that space amongst every other element of the mix for the dialogue to be able to punch through and not be all muddied up by any other sounds that exist in that band of frequencies. But even with all that work, lines of dialogue can still be hard to understand. The kind of feeling has been if you you want your movie to feel quote unquote cinematic, you have to have wall to wall bombastic loud sound. A lot of people will ask like, why don't you just turn the dialogue up? Like just turn it up. And the, uh, ugh, if only it was that simple, um, because a big thing that we want to preserve is a concept called dynamic range. The range between your quietest sound and your loudest sound. If you have your dialogue that's going to be at the same volume as an explosion that immediately follows it, the explosion is not going to feel as big. You need that contrast in volume in order to give your ear a sense of scale. But the thing is, you can only make something so loud before it gets distorted. So if you want to create that wide dynamic range, you have no choice but to push those quieter sounds lower instead of pushing the louder sounds louder. So explosions go up and dialogue comes down. Which brings us to the Christopher Nolan of it all. A separate structure within the others. That is to say that, are you right? Pushing out of orbit. Nearly every film of his has been criticized for its hard to hear dialogue that essentially begs for subtitles. But as his headline explains, he likes it that way. According to an interview in a book called The Nolan Variations, he said that he gets a lot of complaints, even from other filmmakers who would say, I just saw your film and the dialogue is inaudible. The truth was, it was kind of the whole enchilada of how he had chosen to mix it. And in his 2017 interview with IndieWire, he said, we made the decision a couple of films ago that we weren't going to mix films for substandard theaters. And this is kind of the crux of the matter. The content that we watch here and here and here is not mixed for us primarily. Recording mixers mix for the widest surround sound format that is available. Typically, like big release films, that is Dolby Atmos, which has true 3D sound up to 128 channels. The thing is, if you're not at a movie theater that can showcase the best sound Hollywood has to offer, you can't experience all of those channels. So after the movie is mixed for the 128 Atmos tracks, 
somebody has to create a separate version of the film's audio where all those same sounds live on one or two or five tracks. This is called downmixing. Downmixing is the process of taking that biggest mix and folding it down into formats with lesser channels available to it. So say at most down to 7.1 or 7.1 down to 5.1 or 5.1 down to stereo, stereo down to mono. Unlike old TVs that were gigantic and had a ton of space for speakers, TVs today are super thin. Like this one that I have in my living room is about the same thickness as my iPhone. So even though it's outputting the same mono or stereo sound that an older TV might, it's still going to sound worse because you have to have tiny little speakers to fit into this tiny sleek form factor. These tiny speakers are also usually on the back of the TV. So the down mix version of this movie that went from 128 channels down to just two is going to sound even muddier when it's pointing away from you. And when you're watching on your phone or a laptop, it's generally not much better. When you combine not great speakers, naturalistic mumbly performances, dynamic range featuring bombastic sounds over dialogue and a flattened mix, it's no wonder we have trouble hearing what's going on. And it seems like the industry knows this because TVs today are shipping with all kinds of settings built in, like this intelligence mode. You can put on active voice amplification in hopes of making that dialogue track come through just a little bit clearer. But of course, that's more band-aid than it is solution. The way movies get mixed likely isn't going to revert back to super pristine dialogue. So the solutions we have are one, buy better speakers and only go to theaters that have impeccable sound. Two, take a chill pill and try to just worry a little bit less about picking up every single word that gets said. Or three, just keep the subtitles on. For people who are deaf or hard. What do you understand? What's on the video? What did you learn? Let's begin with Lewis. Oh, oh. Uh, <clears throat> I think that, <clears throat> sorry. I think that um, they are talking about how the, how the, the technology has been uh, evolving. Mm -hmm. Along this, uh, I don't know, maybe fifty years or even more. Mm -hmm. But uh, initially, due to the size of microphones, uh, actors uh, were <clears throat> um, uh, what is the what is the opposite of something that is volunteer? Uh, so that is volunteer is so that is volunteer. Uh -huh. when you are in a when you are well, when you are active in a vol 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 that way, what is the opposite? It's involuntary. Involuntary. Uh huh. Involuntary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they were involuntary. So no. That sounds strange. What up, are you going to say? Ah, yeah. Voluntarily. Um, that's <clears throat> what is, is, is there a, a verb related to, uh, or to say that something is mandatory? Uh, no. A verb, no. It will be a description. So they were man, man, mandatory? No. Obligate. Obligate exists. No, obligate <clears throat> doesn't exist. Okay. I, I know what were, you want they to were say. forced. Forced. Very good. Much better. Thank you. Uh -huh. So if they were forced to 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 speak uh, with a higher <clears throat> volume. Mm -hmm. Because the, due to the size of the microphone, they were not near to the microphone. To the microphone. But Plus, it, the, the, <laughs> the, the microphone didn't pick up a, a full 
uh, it was directed into only one section. If you if you moved your mouth to another section, the microphone wouldn't pick up your voice. Exactly. Hmm. And obviously, <clears throat> additionally, sorry, additional due to the size of microphone, it was not easy to to hide them. So to hide were, them? Uh, what do you mean hide? Uh, H H E D D. Ah oh, yes, to hide it. Okay, okay, okay. Because it was too big. Uh -huh. Okay, I get it. So uh, they were in in some position where the where the cam didn't uh, shoot them. Mm -hmm. And uh, as an actor, you need to to monitor where the, the microphone uh, was. Or the microphone. The microphone, uh -huh, the microphone was, uh -huh. but now talk. the microphones are so small. So practically each actor has one of them, uh, even in the pocket. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So in this way, uh, they don't take care about the volume, about the the tone. Mm -hmm. So it is easier that the microphone loves the uh, yeah the audio or the dialogue, mm -hmm. and there is technology which could help to enhance. Uh, the the audio that uh, was captured, mm -hmm. but it is uh, it has a cold, a high cost. Totally, of course. So it's not uh, yeah, it's not something. How could I say? Uh, I don't know how to pronounce. I have read that word, but I have not. I don't know how to pronounce it. I, I will pronounce it, and it is. Uh, wrong, please correct me. Yeah, this is not viable. Viable. Uh -huh. I think the pronunciation is right. Eh? Ah, okay, thank you. The word. Mm -hmm. Viable. Ah, good job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, viable in many cases. So, I think that is the issue. Totally right. Totally right. That's it, the issue about about this specific uh, uh, production decisions. They need to pick up most of the audio in scene because if they don't have the audio in, in, in the camera or in the moment they are filming, they need to spend more money on paying the, 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 the actors, the audio and everyone. Yes, Chucho. Uh, teacher, Victor is trying to enter, but he uh, is so... Really? But yes. he's not... He's in a different link. Okay. Let me... tell, tell him the, the link is has changed. Uh, keep Victor out of this class. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even... He's not even arriving. He's 30 minutes later. Jesus. Yeah, the link the link is in the description of the WhatsApp chat, Chucho. Okay, uh, okay, okay. That's an interesting question. You change the the link of of the meeting mm -hmm. every but, month. Uh, but the yes, but the link that is available on the description in the header or in the description of this group is the new one or is the previous one? No, that's a new one. Every time I change it, I change it to the description too. Ah, okay, thank you. I think, let me, let me check. Because if he's using another one. If Victor don't bring chilaquiles for everyone, keep out of this class. Yes, man. That would be great. Right I now. think Chuchor is also, also agree with this. <laughs> I agree. I agree, definitely. It's eight six seven five five. Uh, eight six seven five five. No, yes, that's a new. Mm. 
the new link is, is right away, right there. Weird. Anyway, yes, exactly. So what, why do they mention uh, cinemas? Do you, what do you remember about that? Let's start with Chucho. Yes. Uh, currently, we need to go to cinemas because they have a special technology that's called OD, OD, I don't remember the name, you know. Okay, okay. Horrible. But yes, and this special technology uh, emits uh, the sound um, throughout the, the the sala, the room, the room. Yes, it's it. and so uh, it's very magic because the the sound enters throughout our ears. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the factor that allow us to hear it correctly. But uh, <laughs> that okay. sound was so interesting because we can see how or why we can we can hear anything when we are watching something in our phone or or ah. do you remember what was that uh the type of the sound or, or the quality because there are three six seven types mono audio you know nice so especially to be able to catch these sounds and the quality the real quality we need this quality but uh, it's only... close watch out because you're using the word quality but quality is different if you say quality i mean in the concept of HQ, high, high quality, you know, we are talking about a high standard, which is this one. Something that, that sounds pristine, something that sounds good. Exactly. But that's not the main reason. Like, like audio has perfect quality, especially when you're talking about even even with this, with your cell phone, you can get very high quality recordings. So quality is not really the problem. There is something else, and you remember very well. You remember these types. That's called mono, stereo, Dolby. Fi exactly. Fi well, kinda. The, the, the technology is called Dolby. No. Ah, okay. But it was uh, mono, stereo, 5.1, 7.1, and the last one, which was Dolby. Okay. Right? So, These are not quality names. They are called channels. <laughs> Let's use... C1 computers. Yes, this one, an audio channel. Look at this. Okay. A means by what, which data is communicated and it changes in elements for a computer system or other system. Uh, uh, right. Yes. So I'm going to explain. This is so interesting because we need to understand how audio has improved during the time the one of the things that Louis was mentioning was a uh, the part of of uh, the microphone right but when we are talking about the microphone we are talking about a mono channel is only one channel catching your voice and getting into the microphone so the microphone communicates with the computer, right? That was the origin of recordings in the past. 
So the best example for this is the Beatles uh, albums. You know, Elvis and the Beatles and all these, all these uh, recordings, very popular music, was originally recorded in mono. Look at the Beatles mono box set. The Beatles in mono. Um. Very interesting because it was the full guitar, voices, uh, battery, and all the instruments in only one channel. So when you watch, for example, a mono mono LP player, how many how many speakers do you think you you would have? One. Exactly. Only one. Which was probably let's say vintage. Vintage mono LP player. So you would connect only one speaker to these to these machines because there was only one channel to be played. Oh, there it is. You see? Oh, cool. What is that picture? Yep. That was the origins of audio and mixing. What is interesting is that somebody, a producer, discovered that they had different recordings. There was one microphone for the guitar, other microphone for the voice, other microphone for the battery, and other microphone for the bass. So they say, hey, let's release the Beatles again in a second master, a second, that's, that's what is called a remaster, <laughs> because they released the Beatles in stereo. So mono refers to the, num the number of speakers that you can use? Be because of the number of channels. Let's say the, the number of speakers because of the number of channels. The channels are the, the, uh, the means, the way information travels. Okay, like a kind of boost. A bus. No. Ah, yes, bus, precision. Bus, ah, uh, okay, bus. A kind of bus, exactly. So when there is a, imagine a highway, that's a very good analogy. In a, in a mono audio file, there is only one lane and all the, all the components travel in the same audio, in the same lane. Okay. You see? Yes. In a stereo, you have two channels. So it was super innovative. It was a massive innovation that you could hear, for example, revolution number number nine with two with an earphones. And you will hear John Lennon in, in, the, in one ear and you will hear the guitar in another ear. That was mind blowing. Like people, people, people would love this innovation. In, in the second release of the albums. Okay. And it was the same, eh? I'm talking, I'm not talking about CDs. I'm still talking about LPs. We are talking about these first innovations in audio. Coming back to 2023, Dolby Almos. An amazing innovation that I personally love because I am a nerd for this information. I really love these type of things. You have, how many channels did she mention? Has true 3D sound up to 128 channels. And 128 channels. Imagine a highway of 128 lanes to distribute cars 
the information is massive. It's only it's not one track of of audio. It's a hundred and twenty eight. So if the if the if the if the channel is shared uh, among the different sounds, for example, guitar, voice, etc. Mm -hmm. So I think you can you as an editor cannot be uh, no, but you cannot focus on enhancing uh, one kind of sound, right? Okay. Oh, definitely. You cannot be. Uh, you cannot say uh, I. I will uh, be working. Uh, I don't know. Uh, correcting uh, errors in the voice because you have only one channel. Exactly. Exactly. Have you ever wondered when they translate a movie, you have the original background, like a taxi passes in the back, and you can hear the same taxi in Spanish and in English, but the voice disappears in English. That's because the voice is in a different channel. They only change the channel and then put the Spanish version on top. Oh, okay, okay. Makes sense, though. Yeah. Uh -huh. The background is the same. The, if they are in a restaurant, you are going to hear the cops. You are going to hear the waitress. You are going to hear the 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 environment. Uh, but you are not going to hear the same the same voice in the Spanish version of the movie versus the English version of the movie. So you can easily choose uh, which part of the context can you would like to change. Exactly. Without Those are in general. Exactly. That's what it is called the track. The track in a channel. Oh. So interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Super, super, super. <laughs> I am so I love this topic. I really love this topic. Yeah, I have noticed. <laughs> yes, it's something I I enjoy. I didn't know anything about this until today. I think. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now you you like getting getting uh, this knowledge can be a problem sometimes because you want to enjoy uh, you know perfectly that a movie that you enjoyed in the cinemas you will never have the same experience again because your television doesn't have that information. Your cell phone doesn't have that information. So it's, that's the reason people spend money to go to the cinemas. That's precisely the, 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 the thing. If you watch Avatar in your television, the experience is super reduced, super, super reduced. So the channels, the, the available channels in in a cinema are not the same as in television? The channels available in the cinema are not the same as in television. Of, ah, okay. This oh, is what... Oh, 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 what is the, the change about what you are talking? Great question. Down mixing. Let's hear this section again. And we can watch this again because Victor just arrived. So we, guess. we can get some context. Check this out. The process of taking that biggest mix and folding it down into formats with lesser channels available to it. So say at most down to 7.1 or 7.1 down to 5.1 or 5.1 down to stereo, stereo down to mono. Um, Did you get it? Yes, when you change the format of the movie, uh, as a consequence, the, the number of channels are, are also uh, being reduced. Yes. So you need to fit more information in every channel. Yeah, so the experience is being affected. Totally. The experience is affected, yes, definitely. That you, some people notice, some people don't, no? Uh, people who know, sometimes notice to be honest if you have a 7.1 surrounding your house 
there is no big difference between Dolby Atmos and 7.1, to be honest. You know? But we are talking about systems that are going through the 25,000 pesos to the 51,000 pesos. So that loss the television is, is something, no? But the difference between Dolby and Mono is, I think... <laughs> Dolby and what? And between Dolby and Almo. What, what, what do you mean? I don't understand. No, that maybe you cannot uh, detect the difference between Dolby and 7.1. Ah, so okay, okay. But the difference, I, I, I don't know, maybe the difference between Dolby, Atmos, and Mono is is super, super great. And Mono, yes. Yes, to totally. Abyss, man. <laughs> totally, totally, totally. You know what has Mono audio? Uh, your cell phone. Your cell phone has mono audio. So it's like watching a Netflix movie on your phone. You're going to have all the information that was meant for different channels in only one channel. And that's going to be uh, usually Android phones or the most Android and in, in iPhone phones have mono, mono, mono audio. Some of them, the new Technology have this stereo sound, and it sounds good. But that's the thing about watching movies on. Yeah, it's on something your phone. unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. <laughs> totally, totally unnecessary. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you have a? Do you, how do you watch movies, Louis? How do I? Uh, are you referring between? TV or cinema or on on both both how do you choose to watch a movie ah okay I, I think depends on how good the movie look okay oh mm -hmm. especially if the movies uh, uh, have uh, a lot of uh, uh, is, is it a special effect? Uh -huh. Special effects, VFX. Uh -huh. uh, I, I prefer, or well, we prefer to, to watch this movie on a cinema. Of course. Uh, and specifically the, the fourth dimension. Mm. Ah, you enjoy the, the, the chairs moving. Yes, yeah, for example, Star Wars. Star Wars, for example. Cool, okay. So you have the movement of the uh, uh what is the name of this? Uh the, the artifacts that are flying, isn't it? Uh, the artifacts that are the flying. machines that fly uh, that flies where in the cinema or in the movie? No, in the movie. <laughs> the oh spacecrafts. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. You're talking about that? Or airplanes? Yes. yes. All the machines, for example, of the of that way, the ship. Now, ships is for ships is also possible, eh? Yes. Yeah, you can talk about ships that go in the ocean. Uh -huh. Ships that go into space. Ah, okay, yes. So, for example, if you are in a ship, the ship is moving, mm -hmm. or maybe down, down, go down. I agree. That that is cool because you you feel that you are in the spaceship, no? Yes, and if you <laughs> if you add the visual experience with your with your glasses, you feel better in that place or in that scenarios. I think it's super super better uh, going to the cinema. Totally, 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 and and and, and it's very interesting. Now it's just a sensorial experience it's yes the audio yes the dolby but it's also moving so it's great it's a great experience experience that will never repeat yes no you watch star wars again in your living room and it's like Meh, i better read a book 
you know. <laughs> Definitely. And if it's a movie, for example, about a drama, mm -hmm. I think uh, you can think maybe television is an option. <laughs> exactly, right? I think somebody understands. Yes. Yes, of course. But you said we. Do, do, do you include Victor? Ah, yes, yes. Uh, the cinema experience here in your house is a familiar experience. Mm -hmm. Family. Familiar Family. is similar to... Familiar is to say, I, on, I have seen this before. Ah, Family okay. experience is a... a ah, we, including your... Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, it's a family experience. So, uh, it's... It's a it's a decision that is taken into uh, together like common agreement. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Okay, what the the common agreement is 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 good. But let me ask Victor if he has like a like a, a special like or a special selection when they are going when you are going to the movies, guys. Are so you? What about Victor? What do you? What is important for you when you go to the cinemas, or when you watch a movie? When you select a movie? Uh, <clears throat> I think that a special effect mm -hmm. uh, is, is important. For example, uh, like Luis Cell told, Seth. Seth. Yeah. For example, a movie of, of Star Wars, Avatar, mm. and The Lord of the Rings. And those are movies that have a lot of special effects. So okay. I think that when these kind of movies, it's important uh, to have a better sound, a better image, and maybe uh, 3D or 4D experience because okay. it's, a, it's a better experience. And on the other hand, if the movie doesn't have a lot of special effects, mm -hmm. uh, maybe I prefer to, to see the movie on my house. Uh, I don't know. So you're pretty similar, like exactly, it's, uh, it's like the same consensus. Yes, or, no. or, 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 for example, if there is a movie or a set of movies that I a lot, I like a lot, mm -hmm. I, I will go to the cinema. For example, I, I, with the movies of Conjuro. Oh, in English, the Conjuring. Conjuring, I see. Yes, yes. The Conjuring movies. Ah, yes. That's amazing. Or The Night of the Devil? Or The Night of the Devil. In English, it's not... Yeah. Ah, what's the name <laughs> of The Night of the Devil? In English, the name of those series was... I think it was Evil Dead. I don't remember. No. How do you? What's the name in English? I need to go to our UNDP. Ah, Insidious. Insidious. Yes, 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 yes. That was the name oh, in English. Super good movies. Really? <laughs> you, you enjoy? You enjoy horror movies? Yes, because yes, this house, this house where we are living now, is <laughs> uh, haunted. A, a special. <laughs> Yeah, uh, how could I say it? Historic, historical set of issues related to this topic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you are you're watching these movies, getting yourself ideas. Yeah, just when you are uh, see, uh, watching <laughs> movies, you say, "Oh, that really happens." <laughs> oh no! Oh my God! <laughs> That's so <laughs> creepy. <laughs> Jesus! Really yeah, identify with the characters of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Well, that's so interesting. 
<laughs> it's so creepy. Yeah, I'm super sad at the same time. It's super sad. <laughs> Dude, that's yes. oh my god. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's like last weekend you know yeah last last weekend yeah so the movie is like so similar that's so creepy jesus christ but but then um okay you enjoy uh these type of movies and do you watch them in family too like do you do you go together to watch these kind of movies yes because all our family love this kind of movies wow <laughs> that's <so> amazing <laughs> That's so so different from my family. <laughs> yeah, for real. That's amazing. That's amazing. In in what so what you like is is the story. What you like is the I mean it, it, the the thing about cinema is amazing because yeah. it's not only technology. Like yes, technology has has changed the cinema through during the years. But it's also the stories and how how identified you feel with with every every story, yeah. no? Yes, that that is very important because uh, special effects uh, are uh, special effects uh, not made a movie. It is also yes. very important the history. Totally. For example, uh, yes. For example, there is a movie. His name was or is 2012, something like that. And 2012, yes. About the end of times, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe that movie have a lot of special effects. But I don't love a lot of the history. And yes, 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 yes. And for example, with Star Wars, I love the history. I love the message that, that this history has. Totally. The, the important, it's, it's very, I love a, a, a lot. That's or, very nice. Yes, yes, for example, in the Lord of the Ring, I love the, the history. Have you, okay, the Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, so you're, you're this, this kind of fan. That's interesting. Yeah. Have you ever seen Star Trek? No, but uh, a lot of people tell me about that movie and that Bro, is a great movie. It's not great. It's the best. I love Star okay. Trek over everything, like in my personal point of view. No, I mean, other people will tell you that Star Wars is better, but for yeah. real, the story, the The, the story and, the, and and both both uh, special effects and stories are really good because it's only possible to have this type of of stories in modern times in previous mm. times it was impossible to have this type of of line story because you needed a lot of technology to to create ah, this type yeah. of story So okay, if you want to see something new and something with real, real, real good story, watch that. It's okay. just amazing, really, just amazing. Recommendation. Okay. Let's give a little pause because Jesse is in the chat, so she'll pass attendance. Hello, Jesse. Hi, thank you. Good morning. Hi, good morning. So I will say attendance, please. Yes. Hi, you see, good morning. Yes, I am here. Uh, Hi, Luis. Thank you. Victor? Hi, you see, good morning. Hi, Victor. Thank you. Uh, Jesus? Jesus, I can't hear. Hi, right. uh, Sophie? Sophie absent. And it's. It's absent. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Sure. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too. So yeah, you know what? The the first movie that I where I screamed was in Insidious. It was the is the only movie where I have a script. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All the horror movies, I I like them too. I really like them. I like to watch them in high volume. Yeah. Only one visual uh, 
monster made me really, really scared, like deeply scared. And it was Insidious monster. And, and I think that is a good, a very good example that uh, special effects are not necessary to to um, to have a, a nice uh, cinema experience. Mm -hmm. That is the, for example, the Godfather. Okay. So the, I think the Godfather is, in my in my opinion, the best movie that the, that uh, has been existed. Has existed. Um, has existed. Has existed. Has existed. And this movie don't have any special effect. Yeah, and, totally. And you can watch in the cinema today or twenty uh, or t thirty years ago, and later, no? Uh, or are you talking about past? About the past, yes. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And it is the same experience, but you and if if today. The Good Fire will be uh, again in the cinema. I I would go to oh, watch. Oh wow, that's really interesting. You know what? It has been so difficult for me to to watch The Godfather. I haven't finished watching the first one because it's it's hard, isn't it? It's it's a tough movie. It's so have you. Have, have you ever watched completely the first movie? No, 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 I cannot. I cannot. I, I, I start watching it and the movie loses me very soon. I, in, the, in the first hour, like, there's so much context that is like, Jesus, when is something going to happen, you know? And then I haven't finished it. What do you recommend? I I don't know, maybe two or nine more, four years ago. Uh -huh. I didn't, I, I have not seen uh, The Good Father, even uh, neither the first one. Okay. But I, I, I have the, the same issue uh, than you. I, yes. I was... I was watching maybe the first half hour, mm -hmm. and ah, come on, that, that it is boring. so boring. Nah, come on, nah, yeah, I stopped. Okay. But uh, there was a first time that I uh, gave it the opportunity, and I decided to to watch the complete movie, even when if I was. Uh, I, if I uh, was uh, getting bored. Yes. And once this happened, mm -hmm. I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. And I continue with the second one, with the third one, and repeat the experience. And in fact, I was watching uh, the first one. I, I think I, I watched The Godfather once, once, uh, no, I watched The, 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 the Godfather mm -hmm. in a monthly way. In a monthly way? What do you mean? Yes, uh, every month. Like one movie every month? No, no, no. The, the complete series, uh, every month. Oh. I repeat, uh, now, uh, I am watching monthly. Wow. The, oh my God. Okay. And every time that I watch The Good Father, mm -hmm. I notice a new detail that I have not uh, captured previously. Really? Yes, yes. Like, ah, did you notice that a truck was uh, uh, following Michael Corleone when he was uh, walking with his girlfriend? Jeffrey, ah no, come on. Ah. Or uh, have you noticed that the good, the, the good father, uh, the, no, pardon, sorry, did you notice that uh, Tom Hagen was excluded by uh, Michael Corleone because mm -hmm. he he was uh, helping to, to he, uh, I don't know, all the characters. Uh, 
to to kill them after this one or something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you say when you say help, never say to. Ah, helping the other character. No, ah, no. Help, helping character. Ah, okay. the other helping the other character. Yes. Okay. 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 So it was. It is a. It is a work of very good direction. But so, as an advice, I recommend you that even when you prepare, I don't know, maybe next week, you know, when you have time, uh -huh. give this opportunity. Uh -huh. Even the initial, I, 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 I recommend that uh, at the beginning the movie goes slow due to the party, uh, the the merit of the of the. Uh, good father's uh, daughter, and this part is, is love. Uh -huh, yeah. But I will, uh, like, they, they, they have told me, resist the first movie, <laughs> because the first movie is hard. Uh, or, or even neither the, the first movie. I think the, the first... Two hours. 40 minutes. Okay, okay, the first 40 minutes. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. But don't lose detail. Also, even when it is war, receive uh -huh. and pay attention, pay attention to in the dialogue because this dialogue uh, takes uh, importance after. I will. I will. You you are the first person to explain to explain really really why it's a it's one of the greatest movies because they, that's what they consider it. I mean. People speak about the, the Godfather as one of the greatest achievements in cinema. Yes. And I have always been like, really? <laughs> like, I've been so bored for the first 40 or for the first hour of the movie, you know? I have never seen anything that is like amazing. So now that you mentioned that, I will give it a, a second. Uh, no, I will give it a fifth try. Because I have tried to watch that movie four times already, you know. Yes, it's. I think it's. It's amazing how all the, the human beings, happiness, sadness, uh, ambitious, is, is it ambition, 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 ambition uh, are present in the movie. So you can notice how the, the characters are evolving and showing this. Uh, different stages with this feeling, so you get involved in a universe. I, I think it's super good. It's great. Wow. Into the experience. I will. Okay, I will give it a try. What has been, what has been a really good, like, uh, motivation to watch that that uh, movie is a uh, series that was based on the creation of the movie that is called The Offer. This uh, guys tell the true story of what happened behind behind scenes. This one. So these guys are, this is uh, the representative of the director of the movie, which is this guy over here. And it's really interesting how the movie was created because there was uh, an Italian mafia controlling many of the many of the businesses, the major businesses in the in in California when the movie was released. We are talking about nineteen what nineteen seventy something, nineteen seventy five probably. In the 70s or 80s, no? I don't remember which, which exactly. When, when was the movie released? Uh, Do you know? Which movie? Sorry. The Godfather. Ah, yeah, 1972. Mm -hmm. 1972. So let's say that this story happens in 1960, 1965, in the the, the book becomes massively popular and they decide to make it a movie. When the mafia discovers that they are making a movie about Italian mafia, 
they try to stop the project. They try to say, hey, you are not going to ridiculous us in front of everybody. And it was a massive, massive uh, fight between the Italian mafia and the uh, producers that wanted to make the movie. They made, they needed to make business with the mafia, illegal contracts, like deals that were not supposed to be. Uh, they even killed a person. I mean, there was a massive, massive problem in the, in the backstage for the greatest movie of all time. So if, if, if you liked that one, I, I, I am not sure if it's going to be the same experience, but the backstory is pretty interesting too. I I watch this. You will love it because you will understand the reference. I I watch the movie. I watch the series, but I didn't understand the references of the movie. Like for example, there's a point when they have a horse head, the head of a horse. Oh, yes. And I don't understand why, no. But but they say that it was iconic in the movie. Like yeah, so yeah, yes, yes, yes. And it's amazing. You need to see it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's it's. I, I think for example that part in particular is super good because uh, with just one object, that in this case is the the, the head of the horse, mm -hmm. the mafia say. Uh, tell you a lot of things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you they don't need to to write something or for example as current narcos in mexico uh, that to, they use uh, uh, i don't know what is the name of this uh, they use fabrics to write messages for example in bridges or, or I don't know. yeah yeah totally uh, that's called that's called well messages fabrics is the, the word is fabrics you can you can I mean, say that too it's, it's, it's mantle, but i don't know how to translate it mm, that's only fabrics, yeah, fabrics because yes. th that's a name in spanish but it's very explicit the message is written in the fabric mm -hmm. but in the case of the mafia uh is a horse of the head for example no? or, or there is a part where they say they send uh, to the family, the enemies of the Corleone's family sent a, uh, what is the name of this cloth that is used by military or the police in order to don't be damaged or injured by the weapons? Yeah, that's a bullet, bullet vest. Uh, okay vest would be okay so they sent a, a bullet vest with mm. two uh, uh, fishes okay. inside Jesus and even one of the Corleone say what is this uh, a vest with two fishes <laughs> <laughs> and one of the old Corleone's members explain uh, this is a Sicilian message and oh, wow. that the the owner of this vest is now sleeping with the fishes oh wow and that means that he's dead uh -huh, exactly meaning that he's because dead. he's on the, the water in the river <laughs> wow okay <laughs> that's that's intense, you know, <laughs> violent. Yes, but you see it. Come on, uh, a bit with two fishes, and it has a, a, an enormous Meaning. violent uh, context around. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's it's more it's the 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 contextual meaning. What is making you understand? No. Yes. That's so interesting. That's really really interesting. I will give it a shot again. I promise, really. 
because uh, that part is it has been a challenge but come on you cannot say that you love the cinema if you haven't watched the, the godfather yes yes and many people use this for example for this kind of references uh -huh. or they uh, quote quotes uh -huh, uh -huh. so <laughs> Yes, only watching a good father, you can interact. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's the only way. Yes. Okay, I will definitely do that. Yes, of course. That. So anyway, the the topic here is technology and everything, right? The thing that we were checking here and the vocabulary comes inside the video. So the more vocabulary you extract from the video, the best. Okay, we are going to talk about channels later again, but now with the with the objective of you getting more vocabulary, getting more words from the video, you need to watch the video constantly so you can discuss about it on Friday. And tomorrow we are going to talk about phrases. Okay, right now, uh, Victor already left <laughs> for some reason, so I think he's he's already ready to go to to work. Uh, what, what happened with Victor is that uh, he goes to the office. Oh, so he needs to leave at seven. Yeah, so he the the, the working schedule of Victor begins begins uh, nine a.m. Oh, okay, makes sense. Makes sense. In that case, yes. I get it. He, he needs one hour to go to that job. So that's the reason that he always abandoned the class at 8 p.m. or even uh, some minutes after. Right. Ah, okay. No problem. No problem. That's good. So so tell him to come early then. <laughs> In my <laughs> case, I am completely of home office, so there is no issue. Ah, that's great. That's great for you. Okay, so don't worry. Then uh, let's uh, keep on going tomorrow with some theory and keep on watching the, the, the video, trying to extract more vocabulary. Yes. Okay. All right. Good job, brother. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, teacher. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Take care.